Well hi there folks, this is a kind of part two of the Little Big Bird build blog but it's also a few of my top tips if you are converting one of these cheap foamies into an RC aircraft. I built 10 of these little glider conversions, my twin fuselage one which absolutely flies like a beast, my little Spitfire which is vaguely based on a Spitfire profile also flies really well and my original build blog has actually got over 50,000 views now. I'll stick links to those at the end, they're more detailed build blogs but this is more, as I say, tips that I've actually learned the hard way mostly in doing 10 of these now plus, should I say, three or four of the mini little gliders. So let's get on with it. First off, this is the best method I've found of installing the aileron servos within the wing in these bigger little foamies first thing I do is mark round it, cut a sharp edge with the scalpel blade, cut out some with the blade and then using one of my little tools here heat this up over the gas and I just melt the way through. Now this servo fits nice and snug in there and now what I'm going to do so that I know exactly where to make a little slot for this, take a sharp pin, I'm going to put it through exactly where I want the lever to be which is there, put it through there, put it through just there and now if I look on the top, can you see that? Not very well. If, if I look on the top you can actually see exactly where I need to cut the slot for that operating arm to come through and as I say the actual the actuating rod will come across here on the top to the control arm. So I'll come back in a second and show you that. And the good thing about this too is there's enough length there on these servo leads to go across here and into the cockpit where it's going to obviously have to connect to the receiver. I have tried in the past burning a hole through here using a hot rod but it really works out well. I always end up coming through one way or the other plus I've, as I've already glued that in that would make it rather difficult now. So I'm just going to cut a very shallow slot into the foam there and just tuck that in. It, it won't even be visible. I'll come back in a minute once I've actually made my little holes there and glued in my control horns on the top. Right, so I centred the servos with my little centering gadget. These are only a couple of quid if you don't know where they are. If you haven't seen them I'll put a link down below always essential to centre before you glue in and you don't need necessarily to connect it to an ESC you can connect it to a 1S LiPo just a 1S and that gives it 4.2 volts which is enough to make it work so here it is not glued in yet as I say I'm going to cut a, cut a shallow slot across there so I can feed through the servo lead and on the top that's all you see which will in a short while be connected let's get on and glue these in cut the slots and get on to the next stage. Right, so glued in. Only needs a little touch on each side. Best not to over glue it because you might have to pull them out at some point if they break. So both glued in and here we are. Both working nicely and you can see how discreet that is on the top. In fact you can barely see it. And in case you're wondering, those little V's that I put in those control arms give you the potential to adjust just a fine trim once you've actually centered the servo and you've glued in your control horn but um, well pleased with those just thought I'd share that with you right so that's elevator servo in I took a guess didn't put it all the way back here because I still rather keep the weight at this end but that's quite tidy that's better I'll give you a closer look here servo there little bit of tube on the wing there and that's the control horn which is a little bit of spare servo lever and I made a slot here to feed the wire in through through a hole there so now we've got all three wires that come from the servos that operate the control surfaces through to the cockpit area all I'm waiting for now is a speed controller and a motor next step is going to be mounting the brushless motor on the front I'm sticking with the 1806 which is what I used on the twin fuselage one and the Spitfire more than enough for this lightweight model first step of course is you cut the nose off and then you've got to make a mount the mount for it the way I actually fix these is to chop off the nose bit of down thrust 
bit of right thrust. When you're making these mounts make sure that you've got a hole big enough to clear that little circlet that rotates on the back otherwise it's going to give you problems because it's going to snag and probably wear out. So that's why I've made sure that's big enough. I never get the holes in quite the right place. Right so I'm going to hot glue that on but before I do that I'll melt a hole through for the three wires from the brushless motor. Okay there it is, it's on. Looks like it may be a bit too much down thrust. And what I've done in the past when I need to adjust it is I just put a blade underneath, ease it up a little bit and put another blob of hot glue so that works. But incidentally while I'm here let me just show you how I fix the hoods on my Liddles of late. What I've come up with. Little copper, little piece of copper wire there that goes into a hole just there to locate it. And I got fed up with rubber bands so Again, a little piece of copper wire goes through a hole there, through a hole there, and holds it because it goes through that. So I'm rather pleased with that as a method of securing the hood. So that's that pretty much finished. So as you can see, electrics are in, 1806 with a 5045 prop. It'll go like a beast with that, even with just the 2S. But I have to confess at this stage, while talking about the electrics that I made a bit of a little error. I said in my, my detailed build blogs the last thing you do when you're making one of these RC conversions is install the elevator servo because you don't know whether you need it here, here, here or here. Unfortunately I didn't leave it until last this time. I kind of guessed where I thought it was going to be and as it turned out, as I discovered once I got to this stage, to actually get a center of gravity in about the right place here. I've had to hollow that out a long long way and if I put in this little 800 2S in there it will go right the way back in and that just about gives you the right kind of spot for center of gravity. Had I figured that and left this till last as I said you should I probably could have got away with putting it here and then the LiPo could have sat further forward and the electrics in there. All of my previous builds I've actually put that in last and I even said it in my videos. And receiver is there, FS2A, three or four pounds. I made a video showing how you sold those. Model finder there, speed controller, which is a 12 I think. And as you can see everything's tidy, servo wires covered up with these stickers you get with it. So that's that pretty much finished. So what happened next? Well she was ready for a mate. So loaded up my van, drove up to the strip and it was a little bit gusty but all the same I thought well I'll give it a glide test. So I threw it into the wind and it just went straight up and straight down on its nose and smashed the nose off. So that was the end of that little trip. Too windy that day. So after gluing it back on, a few days later we had a perfect forecast. So I drove up again. Well it gets even better. Last time I came up I broke it because it was too windy. This time everything looking absolutely beautiful. Very little wind. And then I found I brought the wrong transmitter. So I couldn't fly any of the three or four models I brought. And so I drove back home, got the right transmitter, got this out of the van. And it must have fallen over in transport because now the motor's hanging off. Of course the reason was when it had nosedived into the ground the first time and I'd glued the, glued the front of the fuselage back on the motor mount was also probably pretty much knocked off at the time. In fact I was surprised at the time that the prop hadn't broken. So basically that was fail for Big Bird 2 but at least my FMS Alpha Jet conversion got a second test flight. That's on a separate video The Maiden. So if you want to see how that went please check out the video, I'll link it at the end. And if you've enjoyed this and you still want to see the Maiden of the Big Bird, because I do, then don't forget to hit subscribe and, and maybe I'll be lucky next time and we get a windless day and I'll get up there and the nose doesn't fall off and it'll fly like the big soaring bird that it's supposed to be. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll catch you all later. Bye for now.